Well, my involvement with the Columbia Water Center is informal. Mm -hmm. It's not a formal one. Because uh, the Department of Economics at the PAU uh, was involved with them, and the head of the department who was involved, he was my student. He is my student. Mm -hmm. So now he's a dean. Since this group was involved, so naturally we have uh, good connections uh, and interaction with uh, with those people. So I wanted to, I inquired about what it is and they sought my help and a uh, little bit of guidance. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went along with them informally, but uh, quite intensively uh, knowing everything and whatever uh, I could contribute, I contributed on this. All right. So you're a, a guide and a mentor? Well, you may say anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, any project which has got a policy implication, that is of use. Simple calculations, uh, mathematical calculations, or you can say the quantitative analysis, that should be just a support to the policy making. But ultimately, what matters is what policy prescriptions to give out of this, which are economically uh, viable and politically acceptable. You know, all depends upon policy framework. If you create an enabling environment through the policy instruments, the farmers will respond. Any stakeholder will respond. But if you are not keep, be creating an environment which is conducive to such actions, that will not be accepted. So policy framework is basic, which gives an enabling environment. And its implementation takes place only if it suits the stakeholders. Well, for example, in the state of Punjab, there is a lot of uh, the stubble burning of the mm -hmm. rice crop and the government of Punjab several times issued orders not to burn the stubbles which was not accepted because there was no alternative. The policy or you can say the orders of the government were not within the framework of the or within the parameters of the feasibilities. So they didn't work. You didn't provide for any alternative. For the use, the farmer has to immediately sow the wheat crop, so there is no alternative but to burn it. Otherwise, the drill won't work. It will not be incorporated in the soil. So this is a policy framework which is not consistent with the actual requirement. But now, when the seed drills have been developed, instruments have been developed where this this, this uh, straw can be pulverized and incorporated in the soil, and seed can, and such policy actions would work. So that's known as happy seed drill, what we call it. On the other hand, there's a feasibility policy environment that is the government ordered that no one can plant the rice before, transplant the rice before 10th of June. And they implemented it because it was possible. Stakeholder also knew that if I plant it, it will be, it will be proud up. Therefore, he waited till the 10th of June. He raised the nursery and did it. That saved a lot of water. You see, by estimation by the university, 52% of the water depletion is before the monsoons. And uh, if that period is avoided because of 10th June, within a short period we are expecting the monsoons. So the water saving is there. So the policy must match the environment in which the stakeholder operates and only then that will be acceptable and by and by I am hopeful that in a year or two they will freely arise the what type of disaster they will be facing if they don't take appropriate action. So in this direction I have a hope. You were you know right at the heart of the, the Green Revolution now you are more of a Green Revolution skeptic maybe if that's a correct No I am not. I am not you know. What is progress? A solution of one problem, you create two. <laughs> you create, you solve two, you create four. Development is nothing but solution, progressive solution of these problems coming up.
mm-hmm. emerging from one action to another, to an action to another. So we are much better than we were when we were deficit in food production, mm-hmm. you see. So I personally would like to handle the problems of surplus rather than handling the problem of scarcities. So the people have to have the food first. The hungry people quarrel, fight, disintegrate. You see, but if the people are not hungry, they tolerate the system. So I think the the Green Revolution that provided their stability to the government, to the to the to the economy. But it creates problem also. The overuse of fertilizer, overuse of water, overuse of insecticides, pesticides, mm-hmm. which pollutes the soil, which pollutes the air, which pollutes the water, and uh, reduces the, uh, the, uh, the the total factor productivity. You mean to gain, to get the same product, you use more and more and more of inputs. So efficiency use decreases. So then there is a challenge before you, how you put it on a sustainable basis. I think the Columbia Center is introducing the concept of tensometer, so that you can physically monitor the requirement of the plant and then apply water. They claim that it, it will save about 30% of the water. But it depends how much it's picked up. I think in a large scale, more than 500 farmers, they they put this tensiometer. And they have a data for 420 people on this. This year, next year, they're going to do thousands. So it will catch up. The word of mouth is more strong than any other propaganda. So I believe this technology and some other technologies coming up like uh, dry sowing of rice, which is developed in Punjab by the technocrats, and we are working on this. There are few of these techniques which can save water tremendously. At least all these files put together, there's a possibility of saving the water up to 50%. Where did, where did this idea come from, the direct city idea? And why Best, it basically, it came from the agrotechnicians mm-hmm. of the Department of Agriculture. The university resisted it to the full for many years. But because it, it was not uh, their find, therefore they thought, uh, you know, who else has got the right to research on this, you see. Little realizing that the field workers are more aware of the effects than the researchers sitting in their labs in their tables. So they are more, you see, near to the ground realities than, than the researchers are. So they have to <coughs> accept them as observers, observers of reality, and interact with them, and then improve the system, rather than resisting them, that you, you have no right to be researchers, you see, you are extension workers, all that. So it came from the uh, agricultural technicians. Mm-hmm. They saw some plants <coughs> growing without standing water, and then they started experimenting. The very first experiment, they involved me, I watched them through for about six years. I propagated about it, developed a kind of a uh, ideology on this, or the, or the line of action on it, uh, on, in my memorial lecture at Indian Agriculture Research Institute, which is the major institute. I propounded the idea that, yes, the rice grows in standing water, but doesn't mean the water, rice cannot grow in the, in, in, without standing water. In fact, we have done research that side. Therefore, we look into it whether we can do something. In the standing water, there are no weeds. But when it's not standing water, the weeds do germinate. But we have found the, uh, the, the, the weedy sites. The pre-emergence application of stomp, we call it. You see, this is one weedy site. So that kills the weeds, doesn't allow it to germinate. But even if they germinate after one month, you apply Another uh, weedy site, which we use normally, nominee gold, that's known as. And that kills all the weeds, and the, there's no problem on this, on, on, on controlling the weeds on this. Even if, you know, there are weeds, it's a trade-off. For example, puddling the soil, applying heavy water, and then puddling it, and then, and then transplanting the rice, which takes about uh, 1,800 rupees, 1,800 rupees. Uh, for transplanting labor. Instead of that, if you control the weeds, it costs you, uh, you approve the weeds, yeah. uh, just a one weeding. 
you remove all those weeds. It costs you only 800 rupees. You save on puddling, you save on water, you save on labor. And more important, if you throw that weed into the field itself, because at that time there is no seeding. Mm -hmm. You see, you throw it, it serves as a mulch, it saves the water from it. So it, it will be more meticulous, even if there are weeds. In my opinion, instead of using the weedy sites, if you have a labor, if you have a labor for transplanting, let's say up to 18, 000, 1800 rupees, if you have applied the labor for 800 rupees, eh? so that is a bit better trade off. And you save, even if you save one watering, you save a lot of, lot of, lot of water. Right. And within two, three years, mm -hmm. I think the people will revert to this because it's easier, it's drier, it's cleaner, and it saves labor, it saves water, it saves soils, and it doesn't reduce the, the yield. If not improve, at least it doesn't reduce the yield. So why shouldn't the people pick up? You have the advantage in the Columbia Center to be totally impartial, balanced one. One objective, how to save water. So it's it's a replication in a sense. One in Punjab, other is in Mali, other is other place and so on and so forth. Then you come out with, with some results. And uh, say with the standard deviation, all that. So to what extent you can recommend these technologies? So I think uh, rather than having one experiment, even ordinary experiments, you have replications. And you cannot depend upon one replication. So it is a kind of replication on different areas, identical areas. So I think the totality of the experiment will give you the techniques efficacy. efficacy. Do you see in India, are, are people open to international collaboration or is there kind of a, yes and a no. resistance to yes and no. the outsiders? And, you know? Yes and no. It depends what comes out of it. So if it is simply observation and so on, so then people are not interested. If they come out with some result which is applicable and which is useful, certainly acceptable. India is more open than many other societies mm -hmm. on this. But they are discriminating in intellect. They do not accept just as you tell them. Because they are not that backward. They have their scientists, they have got their intellectuals, they have got their practitioners, farmers have got the experience and they are good businessmen. So they will not accept as such. So if you come out with something usable, useful and efficient, it will be accepted.